Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Morning Grind podcast. My name is Keith Eiser. I will be filling in for Stevie TPFL today. Uh, it is Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. We have a 10-game NBA slate to break down for you today. And here to help me do that is Tim Buell, Tasteful Tides. Tim, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm doing well, Ice fan. Yeah, like what a Lakers Bucks game we're watching tonight. This game is tied in overtime. Um, you know, this was my favorite game stack on the board, and I didn't build into it correctly. I left off Austin Reeves, which is gonna crush me. I had a really good team with the honest going, who was super low owned, but I got no I got no Austin Reeves. I, I took Spencer Didwitty instead. So that's gonna that's really gonna hurt. <laughs> yeah, that, that is, a, ouch, that's a big point differential there. Austin Reeves get, just going nuts. So is D'Angelo Russell and Anthony Davis. Like, we were even asked this on crunch time, would you play those three together? And we both were kind of like, nah, yep. I don't know if they have enough upside. Well, we're getting overtime, so they have enough upside, it turns out. Um, it, it happens. It turns uh, out I, the three of those guys <laughs> did did have enough upside, and we were, we were incorrect. So, yeah, yeah it's uh, quite quite the game, though. Quite the game. Yeah, it, it is definitely a crazy game. Weren't the Lakers down pretty big, pretty big comeback from the Lakers there? Oh yeah. They were getting they were getting rolled out of the gym and all of a sudden they stormed back in the second half. And basically us uh Reeves and Russell and Davis and, and Ru Rui's having a big game too. So it's definitely uh it's definitely quite the game. Yeah, nice. Uh Luca in that game still going on, of course, as we as we record this the night before, but uh, let's. We got ten games to talk about. Let's go ahead and uh, jump in and start breaking them down. Does this sound like a plan? Yep, sounds good. All right, first game on the slate here. Uh, we have the Brooklyn Nets at the Washington Wizards. Two twenty-five and a half is the total here. Uh, the Nets are two and a half point favorites. There's a lot of injuries today, so we may not get all of them, but I've got most of them written down here. I believe uh, Brooklyn still without Ben Simmons, Cameron Johnson. Dennis Smith Jr. and Kata Bates Diop. Cam Thomas is questionable again after missing last game. Uh, on the Washington side, Ty Jones remains out, Isaiah Livers, uh, Eugene Omaruri, and Landry Shamit as well. Um, first game of the night, big slate. Anything you're liking here on the Brooklyn side, Tim? Yeah, well, the Cam Thomas situation is going to be very relevant to the slate. Um, if you were to miss, that would give us really nice value on guys like Dennis Schroeder. Uh, Nick Claxton, uh, even, you know, Mikel Bridges would come into play. We all know that we want to stream against Washington. Uh, we've been doing it all year. Um, I'm afraid to even mention Lonnie Walker's name after my, <laughs> you know, awesome take the other night on Lonnie Walker. But, uh, I mean, a lot of people got burned, burned by him, so might be want to try and go back to him. Uh, I think uh, Dorian Finney-Smith at 4,400 would be interesting also. But if you lose Cam Thomas, like, you 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 lose their primary scorer, so um, I think that you know there would be some really really uh, awesome plays on the Nets. Nick Nick Claxton at sixty four hundred, that would be really cheap. So like I know it's a big slate, and I know this is the first game, but this is going to be a really really strong spot. And if Cam Thomas plays, I wouldn't mind playing him at seventy two hundred just as like a one off type play, just to get exposure to a high uh, high ceiling scorer. Yeah, I, I agree with the Cam Thomas take there. If he does play, he's he's in play, I would say, because of his upside with this really juicy matchup, as you alluded to. Um, I was with you for what for the record on Lonnie Walker. I thought he was going to take up all the usage <laughs> off the bench, e even when he was moved to the bench. Like we had him projected to start at first, I believe, and he was popping at, as the best best point per dollar play on the slate. And then it turns out he didn't start, which I was still totally fine with. I thought he would still run out there for. I don't know, 25 minutes at least. He was still um, the best point for dollar play on the slate, even not off starting. The yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Turns out he did not hardly play at all. Nine minutes is all he saw. So super risky right. to go back to him. But I don't I don't think we need to do it on a, a nine game slate. But it, it is intriguing um, because he, he can get buckets um, and you would think he'd have a lot of usage. But if they're not going to play him, I guess we can either. Um, love the Claxton call. Totally with you on that. Uh, DFS Dorian Finney Smith in play just for the minutes. And if, if Cam Thomas is out and Jalen Wilson is the guy starting again and he's, he's going to play 30 minutes, I think he is he's a viable punt play at, at 3,400 again. How about the Washington yeah. side? Anything you like on the run back? 
Uh, not not a whole lot on the run back. Um, I think I I think the Wizards are too healthy. Really, um, I, I I am a fan of Atvia. I don't think this is a great matchup for him, so I'd probably pass. Kuzma maybe, but on such a big slate, I don't want to pay eighty four hundred for him. So I I think the Wizards are too healthy uh, for this slate. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. They've been without plenty of guys very recently. Um, Bagley yeah. had been out for a while. Kuzma's missed a couple of games. Obvious missed a couple of games. So Jordan Poole up at sixty nine hundred now, even without Tyus Jones in there. I don't think I'm going that route. Always a volatile play. Maybe there's some upside there, but I don't. I don't really love this matchup against Brooklyn. They pl- play at a slower pace. Uh, Kuzma, I agree, just a little bit pricey. Uh, I think I am out on Washington as well. So we will go ahead and move it on to the next game that will be the Cleveland Cavaliers at the Charlotte Hornets. For the uh, Cavs, they are still without Donovan Mitchell and Dean Wade. Looks like we do have Max Struess listed as questionable, so set to hopefully make his return. Um, we'll have to wait on that news. Um, but he's been out for several games. Max Struess listed questionable on the Charlotte side. We have Lamelo still out, Mark Williams, Cody Martin, and Seth Curry as well. Um, let's start with the Cleveland side here. Obviously, the the Max Struess news matters a little bit, um, but Evan, Evan Mobley is back after a, a little bit of an absence, still without Donovan Mitchell. Anything you like in here for Cleveland? Yeah, I mean it's it's tough because both of these teams play really really slowly, um, but. You know, uh, Charlotte's defensive rating is so, so bad that I think we can get exposure. Guys like Jared Allen, I like quite a bit. Um, I think Levert, maybe at 7,300. There's a little bit of upside with that price. Darius Garland, 7,400. Um, but I, w- I, w- I would limit it to one Cav. I wouldn't go crazy with this matchup. But I think getting some exposure against the Hornets is always a good idea. So um, the only problem is, can this game stay close? So we just saw this matchup, and the, and the Cavs won by 20-plus. So um, Mo, Mobley's not going to play enough minutes to matter. Um, you can't play him. So really, it's 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 uh, Levert, Garland, and Allen for me. Um, I like that Levert still has shooting guard eligibility. So I think Levert uh, might be my favorite play, but it really depends on Struess, too. So that Struess news is kind of important regarding Levert. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Like, I imagine that Struess jumps back into the starting lineup and Levert mo- moves to the bench. I can still see 30-plus yeah. minutes for Levert here, but he ha- has been priced up because he's been smashing without Mitchell and Struess. So I think he's still in play, but just he, he is a touch overpriced. The matchup makes him playable, uh, even at 7,300. Jared Allen ceiling diminished a little bit with the return of Mobley, and Mobley's still on that minutes restriction, or we're, we're assuming he will be uh, just 25 minutes in the last one doubtful he gets up to 30 minutes in this spot so I agree Cleveland just a little bit overpriced here for the most part I think Levert is my favorite target as well none of it is really comfortable though with with um Struess potentially returning if Struess is out again then Levert's absolutely in play he'd be a great play at 7300 in this matchup Allen I'm probably out on him as well um just I, I don't think he has quite the upside with Mobley in there uh Charlotte on the other side pretty healthy uh considering th- their situation they they played with this type of rotation for several games now anything you like here against a tough Cleveland team I think we could move on pretty quick from this matchup <laughs> uh I'm not attacking Cleveland on a 10 game slate uh like you said Charlotte's too healthy um they're gonna be a pass for me nobody I would even consider yeah, I, I think I'm with you there. Miles Bridges price is under 8K now at 7,900. So maybe a shot there, but I mean, that would be, I'd need 150 it's, lineups to even consider it. It's too bad Grant Williams is only center eligible because I think he'd be somewhat interesting if you could play him at power forward, but I'm not going to waste the center spot on Grant Williams. I'm, I'm with you there. I, I like that call. Um, Poku is a guy who's gotten a little bit of run here recently. Minutes have kind of been all over the place, though. I think it's hard to trust him on a 10-game slate. He did have a nice game in this matchup last time, but he only played 19 minutes. Um, he's 3,700. He does have that power forward eligibility. If I was looking for a cheapie yep. here, I think Poku would be the guy i go to. That's a really good call. Yep. All right. Moving on here. Next matchup, we have Golden State Warriors at the Orlando Magic. 217.5 is the total here. Orlando is 
are four point favorites. Golden State is on a back to back, so they do not have an injury report out. Uh, Orlando is mostly healthy as well. Um, just Gary Harris and Caleb Houston listed as questionable. Everybody else should be good to go in this one. Um, let's start on the Golden State side here. I don't know if they're resting people in this spot. We saw uh, Jackson Davis miss uh, in in their first game of this back-to-back leg. I assume that he's back in there for this one. Maybe they rest Draymond or somebody. Um, it's a little bit tough the night before trying to figure out what they're going to do with their injury report. Uh, but anything you like for Golden State? I agree with you, though. I assume that people are going to be sitting for Golden State, and that will open up some value. Like if Draymond were to sit, then uh, Jackson Davis would be decent value. Uh, maybe, maybe Curry or uh, Clay sits. Clay started tonight over Pajemski. So maybe we see Clay sit. That would make Pajemski decent value at 4,900 uh, point guard, shooting guard uh, eligible. Um, this isn't a good matchup, though. Like these two teams, it's not a good fantasy friendly matchup. So you need uh, solid value. Uh, uh, for a Golden State to be playable. Yeah, I agree. I, I would want some injuries here. Orlando is not a, a matchup that I like to target typically. They play slower. They've been outstanding on defense as well. So unless we get a bunch of guys out here for Golden State or somebody like Seth Curry out, um, agree that Jackson Davis would be a great play if Draymond were to rest. But hard to know here as we break it down. If they're fully healthy, I, I would be out on Golden State. Uh, I, on the Orlando side, um, another healthy team. Golden State plays pretty solid defense as well. Anything you're you're targeting here for Orlando? Uh, I have a question for you because you're actually on the projections team. Uh, Gary Harris and Houston are both questionable. If they were both to miss, would it be Joe Ingles? I think it would probably be Anthony Black. It would be Anthony but Black it, if they both. It, okay, I was thinking. Be. Well, I was yeah, thinking hopefully I, that, we that's could actually play like a min price. Yeah. Go ahead. Because Harris missed last game and Houston started. Right. Um, he barely played, even though he started. Uh, man, the Orlando rotation is just, it's brutal. They're guard, they have so many guards and they play them all. I know. Um, yeah. Black has not been getting much wrong, r- much run here recently. So maybe, maybe I'm wrong with that take. Black would be my guess. I know it's not going to be Cole Anthony. They like to keep him off the bench. Um, they like right. his usage on that second unit. So I I think that it is between uh, Black and Ingles. And if Ingles is starting, I'd still be a little bit concerned about how many minutes he plays. Okay. All right. That's who I was thinking would be Ingles. But uh, the other person I was looking at is uh, Franz Wagner at 6400 just, just because that price tag is so, so cheap. I mean, that is really cheap for a guy who's going to play mid-30s minutes. Um I think he's very, very viable on this 10-game slate. Same thing with uh, Jonathan Isaac. Doesn't play a ton of minutes, but huge points per minute up- upside. Uh, 4,000 uh, power forward center. I think Isaac and Wagner are my two favorite plays. Yeah, I, I like both of those calls. Actually, Wagner, I like the that price tag. We've played, paid mid-sevens for him most of the year, so all the way down to oh, 6,400. Yeah. He's been struggling a little bit yeah. recently, but that's a price point where I'm I'm willing to take a shot for sure. Um, and the this Isaac whole team, Magic team is very yeah. cheap. Yeah, they are. Um, the Isaac thing it depends on how much value opens up on the slate. I think if we're if we're yeah. starved for value, he's certainly in play. Um, he did absolutely crush in in the last game as a guy that can rack up a bunch of stocks and get there that way. I, I wouldn't expect the 25 point outburst again, but. Who knows um, if he's if he's going to play twenty minutes? I, I have some interest there. Yeah, All definitely. Right. Moving on to the next game here, we have the New York Knicks at the Toronto Raptors. Knicks uh, still banged up without OG Ananobi. Uh, Julius Randle and Mitchell Robinson remain out. Alec Burks is listed questionable after he missed the last game. On the Toronto side, all kinds of injuries here. Um, Scotty Barnes still out. RJ Barrett. Chris Boucher, Jakob Pertl, and Emmanuel Quickly, uh, and Jonte Porter as well. After what a wild story that is, man. Unfortunate to see things like that with Jonte Porter. Yeah. Um, ruin it yeah. for all of us. Don't do not do that, yep. please. Um, yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, uh, the Raptors have been a team to target here. We know that Tibbs loves to play his guys big minutes, so I'm, I'm assuming we're going to have a little bit of New York love here. Uh, what are you liking? Yeah, so I was looking out over the, like the entire slate before the show, and I was like, 
how is Dante DiVincenzo under 7K? So <laughs> he is definitely going to be like all formats type of play, regardless of news or anything else that happens on uh, Wednesday during the day. Uh, like I'm probably going to be playing DiVincenzo. So uh, uh, shooting guard, small forward, I think he's borderline a must play um in cash at least and then probably a must play to be overweight on in, in gpps also uh obviously don't hate heart uh, josh hart or hartenstein um i think they're very very strong plays as well uh jalen brunson is okay i think it depends on what other value opens up for him and then i think precious maybe at 4900 is decent value also yeah, I mean, I you have to have interest up and down the board here. Awesome matchup against Toronto. Love the DiVincenzo call. Uh, he played another 40 minutes, so we'll see. I think Alec Burks out is going to – would help him achieve those 40 minutes again. Even if Burks is back in there, though, should be safe for low 30s, uh, and he would very much be in play at 6,900 in, in this matchup. The Hardenstein thing is really interesting. Uh, he's still playing like mid-20s minutes, so that – seems to be like a ceiling they don't want to push him into the, the upper 20s even uh but he's been playing extremely well here recently no Jakob Pertle on the other side no they're just extremely small Olenek is basically the only big that Toronto has left uh so I I definitely have interest in Hartenstein Josh Hart of course like we know the story by now the man has been racking up triple do doubles like crazy he's pretty much locked in for 40 minutes so he's absolutely playable Miles McBride has been in the starting lineup. Price tag is now up to 5,600. That's a little bit rich, but another guy is going to be out there for 40 plus minutes. Um, 43 again in the last game. So, like, dude's averaging like 46 minutes over his last four games. It's absolutely incredible. I don't love the price on that, but if he's going to be out there that much, I, I mean, if I land on him, I, I wouldn't kick him out of the lineup for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, how about the Toronto side? Any, any interest? Uh, right now, so we got quickly out and Baird out, Porter out, obviously. Um, maybe OJ Abaji, perhaps at 5200, but really, no, I'm not playing Trent or Kelly Olinick. Uh, I'm not going to play Grady Dick. Uh, I think for the most part, it would be Abaji, and that's really it. And I think that's a stretch, to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're just they're a bad team, like, there's certainly some blowout potential here. Um, We've seen Freeman Liberty was the guy that got the start in the last game. He did play 29 minutes yep. at 4K, 4,100. I think you can go back there. It's not a great matchup, tough matchup, actually, against the Knicks. Um, I, I agree, like, Agbaji is playable at 5,200. Nothing to get too terribly excited about here. Um, Gary Trent has upside as long as all these guys are going to remain out. It's going to be inconsistent upside, but it is there. I'm with you. Uh, pretty, what pretty about what about Gee? Yeah, I guess we kind of have to consider him now, don't we? Um, I think we do, especially if Porter probably doesn't play through. again. <laughs> and right. as long as Pirtle is out, I think he's the backup center here. Right. Wow, tw twelve minutes against Brooklyn and only put up three DK po points. I'm not super yeah. familiar with this guy, but I mean, he's a cheap center. I that I always like to target cheap centers. Um, doesn't look yeah. like he is a huge permanent producer though, so. I don't. I probably leave him on the on the shelf here on a ten game slate. Yeah, worth noting for sure. Right. He's a thirty one hundred guy that's going to get some too, minutes. It's too big of a slate, probably for him. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, let's go ahead and move on to the next game here. Portland uh, at the Atlanta Hawks. Um, we have a two. Nope. Sorry, I lost my total here. Two twelve and a half is the total. Uh, Atlanta, big 12 and a half point favorites on the Portland injury report remains lengthy. We have Anthony Simons, Sharp, Brogdon, and Rob Williams still all out. Uh, we also have DeAndre Ayton and Matisse Tybal listed questionable. The Atlanta injury report is lengthy as well. Trey Young remains out. Jalen Johnson, Sadiq Bey, and Yanyaka Akangu among the regular rotation guys. They also have uh, other guys Kobe Bufkin, A.J. Griffin, and Mohamed Gouye uh, listed out. And DeJounte Murray is also listed questionable. So potentially an extremely shorthanded wow. uh, Atlanta team here. If DeJounte misses, man, it, it's getting super, super thin here on the Atlanta side. Somehow I missed that Murray was questionable also. 
Um, but yeah, so we've lost Simons. We lost Brogdon, obviously. Um, Aiton and Grant are questionable. So that leaves Scoot, right, at 6,100. An amazing matchup. Should play pretty big minutes. Uh, even better matchup if Murray sits. So uh, 6,100 for him, I think, is a re really, really great uh, play. Um, if Aiton were to miss, I think you could still play uh, Duop Wreath at 5K in this spot. And then we've seen Banton just crush, just yeah. keep shooting. So, I mean, his price keeps going up and he keeps paying it off. So I think he's at least got upside for like large field GPPs taking a shot on. Yeah, I, I completely agree. Banton has been playing as well or better than Scoot. So um, I agree with your Scoot Henderson call completely. He should be in the starting lineup here again. Um, as long as the game stays close enough for him to play 30 plus minutes, he should be a smash at, at 6,100. Banton at 6K. I have a ton of interest here. I think I left Jeremy Grant off the injury report. He's doubtful to play in this one. Uh, so, I, I mean, okay. assuming that yeah. Grant sits. Sorry, I, I didn't mean yeah. to omit him. Um, but yeah, Scoot and Banton, my two favorites. If Aiton misses again, I had I jammed in as much duop breath as I could in this in the spot last time. Did not work out so well against Houston. I probably go back to it. I don't love that he's up to 5K now. Um, preferred him when he was like in that mid 4K range. But if if Aiton is out, Ban um, Reith is still playable. That's probably about as deep as I'm going. Uh, even if if Aiton, Grant, Tybal are all out, like I'm not chasing Chris Murray or T Tamani Kamara cheap stuff. I don't think they're not even 3K anymore. They're up to 4K. Um, you have interest in either of those cheapies who will play. Big I kind of have eight, interest. Eight I kind of have interest in Kamara if Thibel sits because Kamara's played over thirty minutes in three straight games. So I have a little bit of interest in him if Thibel sits, but that's about it. That's fair. All right, on the Atlanta side here again, this is going to be entirely dependent upon Dejounte Murray because if Murray sits in this one, Atlanta is extremely thin. Um, so. Any interest in DeJounte Murray, first of all, if he plays, and then if he sits, what are we doing with Atlanta? I don't really have that much interest in him if he plays. I think there's better studs that we can play later on in the slate. 9,800 is quite a bit. Like, I get it. I know it's a, like a good spot, quote-unquote, but um, I think he's a little bit pricey. So not really. Um, if he were to sit, then it's an absolute value, you know, Everyone, you know, like Bogdanovich, Krejci, Fernando, Hunter, you know, like all those guys become basically must plays. You know, it'd be like pick your favorite hawk, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, I don't have much interest uh, in 9,800 Murray, though. Yeah, I do think the ceiling is incredible um, with Jalen Johnson out in addition to Trey Young. But that price is, is climbing up there. They're twelve. The Vegas has it at twelve and a half right now, so that's leaning to me. It feels like Murray's going to play in this game. Um, I think that would be a little bit closer spread if he was going to sit. So we'll have to wait and see on that, obviously. But I agree, a, a little bit pricey in a double digit spread matchup. Um, if he's out, I agree. Bogdanovich would be an awesome play. Um, should lead the team in usage in this spot. DeAndre Hunter is back to playing big minutes. So not a comfortable click usually for me, uh, but he, he, I mean, you have to consider him if they are without DeJounte as well. Capella's usage should be elevated in that spot as well as Fernando. Like like all those calls, Krejci is the cheap guy. Yeah. Go ahead. Would Krejci start at, start at the point? Yeah, I, but I think that's probably what they would do. Um, and then go it'd be with Krejci, Garrison. Bogdanovich, Capella, Hunter. And Garrison Matthews, I think. Uh, oh, I always forget about him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Maybe maybe Forrest could see time at the point and they'd leave Garrison on the bench. But like if they started Forrest at point and continue, continued using Krejci on the wing, that would be perhaps interesting i think you could play forest certainly in that in that type of situation yeah uh, but I, th I agree i think they probably shift krejci to the point and then somebody like garrison matthews who's not all that exciting even if he plays big minutes uh at 3500 i mean he's cheap enough like if he sees 28 minutes we have to consider him but he's he can be low per minute he can be an okay shooter at times too though um so i have a little interest there 
uh, against Portland if if Matthews were to start. Garrison, that is. No interest in yep. Wesley, no matter what. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh let's go ahead and move it on to the uh los angeles clippers at the philadelphia 76ers a 218 and a half total here uh clippers are five and a half point favorites uh let's see i did not have an injury report for the clippers for some reason um uh, they, they did not play on a back-to-back so i'm not sure why that's not out yet but um on the Sixers injury report, we obviously have Joel, M- Joel Embiid out. Uh, DeAnthony Melton and Robert Covington are also still out. And Kelly Oubre is listed questionable. Let's start here on the Clippers side, assuming that they're mostly healthy. We'll have to see what once the uh, injury report comes out. But they've been healthy the past couple of games. Powell missed a game in there. Um, who else has been questionable? There uh, Was it ma- not man? Somebody else missed a game. Uh, uh, PJ Tucker has missed a game or two here recently. He doesn't really matter, though. He I, I assume matter. that the yeah the yeah he does not matter. The Clippers are p- potentially completely healthy here. Um, the matchup against Philly yeah. is is pretty good, but uh, any interest here in Clippers? Not really. I mean, this is going to be a slow paced game. Um, you know, decent defensive teams also. Uh, if the Clippers are healthy. Um, what about Russell Westbrook at 4,900? You know, he played, he played 18 minutes last game. Uh, it it was a blowout. Um, I know it sounds gross, but 4,900. Yeah. They're tempting us with that price. Aren't they? Um, They I mean, they really are though. (laughs) Uh, This is assuming that like, we don't get like Atlanta value and all that stuff, but like assuming we, we don't get tons of value. I think Westbrook at 4,900 is pretty good play, actually. I, I think I'm on board with this, um, especially if the game gets out of hand. Uh, the Clippers are pretty heavy favorites here. Westbrook might see low 20s minutes, and if like, we know he's right. going to do everything while he's out there. Uh, he's extremely active. 4,900, a little little chance for extra run and a blowout. I'm, I'm on board with that, I think. For the, the studs, for me, I, I always have a hard time picking which one of these guys is going to be. I never play more than one of them together. I think, right? Like it's been George recently. Has like Harden was hot there for a little while. I don't know. I I don't have a favorite here. I, I'll leave them in the pool. If I land on one of them, I'm I'm completely fine with it. It's, they certainly any of the three could find a ceiling, but trying to figure out which guy it's going to be in any given game is never never a fun thing to try to figure out. You have a, a preference. My, my favorite is Kawhi. My favorite is Kawhi, but I don't have a lot of conviction behind that. All right, sounds good. Um, and then on the Philly side here, any interest? Tough matchup here against the Clippers. It's a very tough matchup. Uh, Philly's too healthy, in my opinion. Even if Ubre, uh, even if Ubre plays or doesn't play, excuse me, um, they're too healthy, in my opinion. Too tough of a matchup. Um, no real interest for me. All right. Um, I think I'm with you. Like even even if Ubre sits, like Buddy Heald, probably the guy that sees the extra run. Um, he did play 32 minutes in the last game. That's not comfortable. He's 4900, so it, you can certainly do that. But I don't know that how often I get there. Like Buddy Heald or, or Russell Russell Westbrook. Who's your preference? <laughs> Same price. Uh, Westbrook. Yeah, Westbrook. I think so too. 99 <laughs> percent of the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's weird to say, but I think I'm with you there. Um, no real interest on uh, the 76ers for me either. Let's go ahead and move it on here. We have the Los Angeles Lakers on a back-to-back in, after an overtime game, uh, getting to take on what's left of the Memphis Memphis Grizzlies. Uh, no injury report here for the Lakers, obviously, on the back-to-back. The Grizzlies injury report is extremely lengthy. Um, we know John Morant, Marcus Smart, uh, Zaire Williams, Yuta Watanabe, Derek Rose, Luke Kennard are all out. Um, Brandon Clark is listed as questionable. I do not believe he has played all season long, so potentially oh, wow. a debut here for Brandon Clark. Um, Interesting. John Conchar and Vince Williams are doubtful. Of course, they have um, the two-way contracts as well of Jordan Goodwin, who was inactive last game, um, and Trey Jamison. So, 
per usual, the Grizzlies are a complete mess. Brandon Clark is now trying to make this even more difficult of a rotation to try and figure <laughs> out. Um, if if Clark does play, I assume they would use one of Jamison's. Uh, I, I believe Jamison would be inactive for this game. Right. So who knows? Um, this is a really tough game to break down the night before with just the uh, situation that is the Memphis Grizzlies and the Lakers on a back-to-back in which LeBron sat out the first leg. Do we think AD plays and on, AD on the second just play, AD just yeah. played a double OT game, too. <laughs> exactly. So AD's probably sitting. AD's probably going to sit, right? I think I'm with you I here. Assume. I, they, they I won. assume it. They won, it was, too. So. Did they come back and win that game? Nice. Uh, yeah, they won by four. They won by four. Yeah. I assume that that was the plan to start with, is LeBron rests tonight and and – AD rests tomorrow uh, because they they saw yeah. the Grizzlies on the schedule, right? We'll we'll have to see. Um, it's hard, again hard to break down since, since we don't have an injury report. They just played a double overtime game. Um, obviously, if AD is out and LeBron is in, we're going to be jamming in some LeBron. Um, D'Angelo Russell and and Austin Reeves are going to be right back in play. Um, yeah. We'll, what to do with Spencer Dinwiddie will, would be a conversation in that. <laughs> um, yeah, anything anything you know that you're going to like for the Lakers, obviously, if, if AD was out. Obviously, LeBron, it'd be like Austin and, Reeves again. I bet I bet Russell and AD sit, and then LeBron plays with like Reeves and Rui and Dinwiddie, guys like then, that. Then I would have a lot of interest in Dinwiddie. If, if Russell is out, right. Dinwiddie's in play for sure. Because I, think I just imagine the they're going to rest more than just AD. That's my feeling. After a double OT game, going to play Memphis now, right? So it's like, seems like it could be more than just uh, AD sitting. I'm kind of with you there. I, I like the Russell sitting call as well, especially with, with Dinwiddie there. Um, yeah, that, that could come to fruition. And Dinwiddie's down at 4,900. So if, if he's back in the starting lineup uh, as he was for Russ, when Russell missed not tonight, but the uh, last game, Russell was out, didn't what he started and played 35 minutes. So I, I would certainly have interest uh, at, in 4,900, didn't what he, if he was starting at the point. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How about the Memphis side? Who who knows what we're looking at here? Who knows um, what this team's going to look like? Um, Scotty Pippen Jr., maybe? 5,200? Um, but, I mean, man, it's so tough. There's so many guys, like, in and out of this roster um what about would you play clark at 3k if he was act you know starting or active or would you take a chance on that i I think he'd have to start for me to trust he's going to play more than like 10 minutes i have no idea (laughs) like i i could see him just playing like the starting triple j at the five clark gets like 12 minutes of backup time um, because they, they don't mind running Aldama at the five a little bit. I don't know. I, I think I need to see it from Brandon Clark before I take shots there. I hate how uh, Jaron Jackson jr. Is center only now at 8,200. Yes. Like I liked it so much better when he was power forward. So I just can't imagine rostering him. Uh, same thing with Desmond Bain. Like I'm not res- rostering Bain, maybe Gigi Jackson at 62. And Pippen at 52. And that's about it for me. Yeah, I mean, I think I have a little more interest in Bain than you do. I, I'm i still waiting for the big blow-up game, and we haven't gotten it here. But he's played 32 minutes again. I think we could see him up in the mid-30s for minutes, 7,900. Yep. We played, paid upper 8K for him um, earlier in the season. I don't know. It, he, I think the price is going to continue to rise as we head towards the end of the season. but. He, it it might be chasing to to try to jump on it this early, but I don't mind Bain. I'd prefer him over Jackson. I I don't love either though. I'm with you on Pippen, especially if Goodwin is inactive again. Um, if Goodwin mm-hmm. is active, I assume they they just split the point guard minutes. Um, but if Goodwin's out again, that gives uh, Pippen a little bit more upside in my opinion. Um, don't mind the price at 5200. Uh, Gigi is the other guy I'd be looking at. Um, I prefer him to Eldama, just a little bit more active. He's just been bl- playing big minutes as well, a uh, bunch of games in a row with like mid 30s minutes, only 30 in that last one uh, blowout against Denver. Uh, but he was playing like 35 pretty regularly before that. So don't mind the Gigi Jackson call. All right, moving on 
to another game here. We have the Houston Rockets at the Oklahoma City Thunder. Uh, let's see, where's my total for this one? 229 and a half is the total. Thunder are six and a half point favorites here. Uh, on the injury report, Thunder look pretty clean. Fully healthy Thunder team. And on the Rockets injury report, of course, we know Shingun is out. Uh, Tari Eason in, is out. Um, and Cam Whitmore remains out. I believe that is also. But Houston's had the situation for, for a couple of games here. Um, OKC plays some, some very good defense. What are you looking at here on the Houston side? I wanted to say Jalen Green, but now he's priced that these guys are really <laughs> expensive now against an amazing defense. So it looks like Jock Landale would, would be the only guy I'm interested in, but uh, I'm not really interested in FEV, Thompson, Jabari. Green's too expensive. Uh, the slate is too big for Brooks. So I think Jock Landale at 54 is the only playable rocket, in my opinion. Do we think he continues to play? So Jabari Smith was out last game, and Landale played 32 yeah. minutes. Before that, he was kind of between 16, 17. And some days we, we saw spike games where he got up into like the mid-20s. Right. If Jabari's fully healthy, I'm not – I don't know. I guess he still has that mid-20s minutes upside. But the price is up to 5,400 now on Landale. So it's not right. like he's 4K. Um I think he's playable, but a little bit riskier than it has been uh, with Jabari right. Smith coming back. I guess Jabari at 69 is decent, but this, Man. I mean, Thunder are so good. When Shin Goon went down, I really thought Jabari Smith was going to like just break out and put up a bunch of awesome, awesome games in a row, and we really haven't seen that. Um, it's he's been got all a couple Jaylen. of nice games. Yeah, Jalen Green's all, a guy that has It's all Jalen now. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, I will probably keep t chasing Jabari Smith because I think he's a talented player. Uh, but Jalen Green, is you're absolutely right, has been the guy that's exploded. I think Van Vliet is playable at 8,400. I don't love playing him. Uh, probably leave Amon Thompson on the bench now that he's up to 7K. His DK price is starting to catch up to his FanDuel price. He's been 7K on FanDuel for weeks. Um, yeah, I, I just I don't love the matchup for Green, but he just continues to smash, so... He's in play, uh, but now he, he, I mean, he's priced like mm. a star. Uh, he's been playing like a star, but this is not the best matchup. So right, I don't think I get to him very much on a 10-game slate either. Um, all right, and then on the Thunder side, anything that you like here? Um, I like Chet quite a bit. I like SGA quite a bit. 10-3 seems a little too cheap for him. So I like Chet and SGA. I always like Williams. Um, those three, I think you can mix and match in a, a GPP uh, portfolio. Um, but uh, my favorite is uh, SGA by uh, quite a bit, really. <clears throat> yeah, I'm I'm with you there. And ten three um, is we haven't we don't we don't have like a ton of studs on the slate. So like ten three seems super super cheap to me. Yeah, I mean I we've certainly paid upper tens ten eight. For, for SGA multiple times this year. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you. That seems a couple hundred dollars too cheap. Houston is a good defense, although they're a little bit depleted now. Um, they don't play at the, the fastest pace, but as long as they can keep this game close, I certainly have interest in SGA. I like the home run call, Jalen Williams, somebody that I, I always play as well. Uh, Josh Giddy had a really nice game uh, here on Tuesday night. I don't think I'm chasing that, just – Never like playing that guy. Um, he has been getting like it's two games in a row now where he's played a little uh, uh, extended minutes is what I'm looking for. He was up to 31 on Tuesday night. He played 29 in the last one. If I knew he was going to play 29, 30, I would have a little interest, but I don't know. About the time you jump on, that's when he goes back down and plays 22 minutes or something, right? Right, exactly. So Giddy's a tough click for me. Um, I don't really have interest in, in anybody else. It's it's SGA mainly. I'll sprinkle in Holmgren and, and Jalen in, in some tournaments too. All right. Uh, moving on now to the Indiana Pacers at the Chicago Bulls. Uh, 232 and a half is the total here. 
uh, only a two and a half point spread as the Pacers are favored on the road. Injury reports, Bulls, uh, Alex Caruso is the questionable guy. They are obviously without Lonzo Ball and Zach Levine still. Julian Phillips and Patrick Williams remain out as well uh, for the Pacers. Looks like a couple of questionable tags here. Benedict Matherin's out for the, for a while. Um, and then questionable, we have TJ McConnell, Aaron Neesmith as the questionable guys. Neesmith missed the last game. TJ McConnell, I'm not sure if he has missed a game all season long. Um, probably pushes, if he were to miss, pushes uh, Nemhard into the backup point guard role. Maybe Ben Shepard. Um, yeah. I don't, like McConnell's been getting solid run here, so. That's an interesting name. Neesmith, we saw missed the last game. Uh, not the best matchup. Chicago plays really slow. Any interest here in the Indiana Pacers? Yeah, I would try and close some tabs. Keith, your internet's going a little in and out. Okay, I will do that. Thank you. Uh, but yeah, so this is the highest uh, total on the entire slate. The spread is only three. Uh, definitely have some in interest in this game overall. Um, I, I like, um, a sack, um, quite a bit at 8,100, um, Halliburton at 92, uh, Turner at 66. All these guys are in play. Um, if McConnell were to sit, I think we get some more minutes at, out of, uh, Nemhard. Um, I think, uh, Smith is kind of interesting at 4,300. So uh, I really like this game. I think game stacking this game is, uh, a, a good idea. Um, but I think my favorite play is uh, Pascal Siakam at 81. We're finally starting to see some ceiling out of him, so uh, I think he's a really strong play. All right. Um, yeah, I, I, I like that Siakam call. Um, I think Halliburton probably gets Caruso defense in this one. Uh, Caruso, one of the better defenders on ball defenders in, in the league. So tough matchup for Halliburton. Haven't really seen the ceiling out of him anyway. So I, I'm definitely not paying 9,200 for Halliburton in the spot. Uh, Siakam at, at 8,100 would be my first look. If Neesmith is out, I, let's see who who benefits. Like they've been doing weird stuff with uh, Jalen Smith and Isaiah Jackson here recently as well. Um, Jalen just hasn't been playing a ton. Like it seems like he would be a, a guy I wanted to target. Uh, Obi Toppin is probably the biggest beneficiary. If Neesmith misses, he's 3,900. I think that that's a guy you could look to. Um, 25 minutes last game without Neesmith. And then if McConnell were to miss, it's probably Shepard as the cheap guy I would take a look at. Um, he's he's had a significant role, uh, like 20 minutes a night, basically. If he if he grabs McConnell's role in addition to his, like Shepard could be pr pretty interesting. But we'll have to see what the injury report looks like. I agree. Siakam is the guy I'm spending up for. Um, Miles Turner is fine. I just I don't love the matchup against Booch. Um, Nemhard's never a guy that I I love to play, but maybe without McConnell, he gets a slight boost. All right, over on the Chicago team, pretty uh, Chicago side rather, pretty healthy here. Uh, anybody you're looking at uh, for the Bulls? I'll tell you one guy, and that is Kobe White at 7200. I absolutely love him, and I love that price tag on him. That's way too cheap for this matchup. Um, Indiana's a horrible defense, has been all season long. Uh, give me Kobe White, favorite uh, GVP play of the entire slate. I oh, hope baby. he comes in very, very <laughs> low owned. Yeah, I I was all he's over going, him. He's going for over. Yeah, he's Let's going hear. for over fifty in this matchup. Love it. That was actually my hot take on the survey against that in um against Washington. He had a, a nice game, but he didn't okay. shoot particularly well. Uh 30 percent from the field, six of 20. But the 20 shots, the 36 minutes, I'm with you. Kobe yeah. White is is on yeah. the verge of a breakout, yeah. and he should be high sevens when he's playing full minutes. Um, so love that call. He's a little bit too cheap in a fantastic matchup. Io's price is a little high for me now that that Kobe is back and playing full minutes. So I probably leave Desunmu on the shelf. He's He's been really solid here recently. Uh, but at that price, I don't think I'm going there. DeRozan is absolutely playable at 8,400. Um, 
not a yeah. guy that I love to play a ton in tournaments just because it, it's so hard for him to find that that huge ceiling. Um, but I think like 50 DK points is certainly within his range here. Uh, at 8,400, I have interest. Vooch, kind of the same thing. Like, I'll play him, but I don't necessarily take an overweight stance on him all that often. I don't love the upside. So I'm completely with you that that the, the Bulls guy I want to chase upside with is Kobe White. Um, Drummond yeah. is an interesting guy who can always get there in limited minutes. We just saw it in the matchup with Washington. Another good matchup for bigs here. Yeah. Um, Drummond is 4,600. Yeah, good call. I think you have to take a look. I know it's a huge slate, but depending on what value we have, I mean, if a, a ton of guys get ruled out and we have three 4K centers in play, then it probably isn't something we need on this slate. Um, but I love the matchup, and he's yeah. a guy who can smash in limited minutes. So just wanted to mention him. All right. Uh, final game really of the night. Call. Final game of the night. We have the Detroit Pistons at the Minnesota Timberwolves. 211 is the total here. A monster 17 point spread here for the Timberwolves. Uh, this this one could get out of hand in a hurry here. Pistons in their <laughs> injury report is lengthy as usual. Um, Duren is probable. Uh, let's go with the out guys first. Fantecchio remains out. Grimes, Quentin Grimes remains out. Taj Gibson, Isaiah Stewart, Asar Thompson, and Stanley Amude all out. Cade Cunningham is questionable, and Jalen Duren is probable. So expect Duren to play here. Uh, Cade is definitely something that we'll be keeping an eye on. Minnesota injury report. It is Carl Anthony Towns, obviously still out, and then Rudy Gobert listed questionable. Anthony Edwards listed questionable. He has been playing through that Q tag. So has Rudy the last couple of games, to be fair. Um, let's start on the Detroit side here. Obviously, the big questionable tag with Cade Cunningham. But do we have interest in Detroit anyway in this brutal, brutal matchup for them? Even if Cunningham sits, I don't really want to pay 5,100 for Sa uh, Sasser, Sasser or 6,200 for Ivy. So I think if you really want to get fancy, if Cunningham's out, uh, play Malachi Flynn. Um, played 29 minutes last game, 3,700. I think he'd be interesting. Um, I think it's too much for Wiseman in this matchup. So... Really, I don't want to play Duran either in this matchup. So really, this is kind of a complete cross off. Unless you wanted to play Flynn, but he's only he's only point guard eligible, so maybe that's not even a good good idea. Um, this is a really, really, really bad spot. So it is. <laughs> it's just, I mean, I, there's really nobody that that I really want to play uh, for Detroit. I doubt. I doubt. We're going to need anybody from Detroit on the slate. Yeah, I'm kind of with you here. Um, even if Cade is out, it is really tough to click on $5,100 Marcus Sasser. I know he was very good in the last game. That he, he grabbed the start, played 35 minutes. He had 24 points, six assists, um, 36 DK points. So, I mean, if he can do that again, sure. But this is a matchup against Minnesota. Um, it was a tough matchup against the Knicks for Sasser in that last one too, but I think that the likelihood of him repeating that performance in this matchup is pretty slim. So even if Cade were out, I don't think I'm going to Sasser. I do like we need to see who's starting um, at the four, right? Like it, whether it's Metu or Tosan uh, Ibomen, Ib Ibuan. Yes. However you say that, like I think one of those guys is in play. Um, yeah, Tosan started last game and only played 16 minutes, though, so maybe not. I, this is just a frustrate, frustrating team. I, I really like your Malachi Flynn call. Uh, he's blowout proof as well. I'm almost certain we're headed for a blowout here. So even if Cade plays, I, I think yeah. you can play some Malachi Flynn. I, I like that call a lot. How I think if Metsu starts, you could play him. Yeah, I, I agree with that. I, I would prefer. I would feel much more comfortable with Metsu starting than Tosan starting. Uh, Wiseman, right. any any interest? I mean, obviously, if Gobert's in there, it's a brutal matchup for him. Uh, but he he has played thirty. I just think he's going to get in really really bad foul trouble, like yeah. really quickly. That's typically the case with him, right? Um, tough guy. I think there's upside at fifty nine hundred, even in a in a brutal matchup, if he can stay on the court. But like you said, he he generally gets himself into a little bit of foul trouble. But thirty one minutes last game, thirty seven against Boston, so. It's not out of the question that he can stay out there for 30 minutes. Yeah. 
Yeah. All right. How about the Minnesota side? I mean, it really depends on the uh, Anthony Edwards situation. Uh, Go Bear is too cheap for this matchup in theory. Um, so, I mean, if Edwards were to sit, which he probably won't, it would definitely be Alexander Walker, Chalk Knight. Um, Kyle Anderson would be in play also. If Go Bear sits, it would be Nas Reed, Chalk Knight. Um, but if everyone's healthy, I'm probably not going to play Edwards at 97. I could see taking shots on Gobert at 78 just because he could just uh, completely destroy this. Uh, 20 tri- rebounds uh, in three quarters tricky. type of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think I prefer Gobert as well. Uh, for Edwards to find a ceiling here, I, I don't think Detroit can stay in the game long enough. So he'd have to do it in three quarters, right. basically. And I just, I don't know if he could pay off 9,700 in three quarters. Nas Reed is the guy I'm interested in. He's been starting at the four. Um, 6,800, the price is coming down, but he's still showing upside. Like even playing next to Edwards and Gobert most of the time that he's out there. So I I like Nas Reed. I, I don't know if they run him in a blowout. Like previously, that was part of his appeal. Like he'd smash off the bench and then he'd get a little bit of blowout run too. Now that he's starting, I have a little concern mm-hmm. that he'd get pulled out at the same time Edwards and Gobert do. Um, but Nas, I think Nas is in play too. Um, so if, if you can't quite get to Gobert, take a look at Nas Reed. If Gobert misses, he's the best play on the slate. Um, <laughs> I, I would it wouldn't surprise me if they they rested Gobert in the spot. I guess like especially if Cade's out. If Cade's out, mm-hmm. Gobert sitting would would not surprise me at all. Um, we didn't talk about the timing of the slate much, but everything. All 10 games between uh, 7 and 8 Eastern. Uh, so it's going right. to be, as Dean would say, a sprint slate. Um, yes. It'll be over in a hurry. We should have most of the news. Um, certainly, even if we don't get it by that 7.30 window, like we're going to have all kinds of games. Four, four 8 o'clock games, is it? Yeah, four, yes. four 8 o'clock games to work with. So plenty, yeah. plenty of ways to uh, rework your rosters and things like that. Um, but should be a fun slate. It is uh, nearing the end of the NBA season. MLB kicking off. Um, I will be on with Stevie tomorrow for the MLB nice. podcast. Uh, yeah, super nice. excited. I'll definitely about that. be listening to that. Uh, got yep. got some. Uh, definitely need to write up some uh, pitcher strikeout props. Tough to target on opening day because pitch counts are still yep. so uh, low still, and you're guessing at the pitch count a little bit. But can't can't wait to get into uh, some betting stuff for MLB. Definitely uh, breaking down the DFS slate with Stevie tomorrow as well. So that that will certainly be a good time. Um, you want to play the morning grind game or should we skip it today? No, let's do it. Let's, let's do it. All right. Um, I did not have time to prepare anything for this, but we can wing it. No problem. Um, all right. NBA morning grind game under 5K to score 7X. Who do you like? Um, under 5k to go 7x. Uh, I'll go precious. Okay, don't mind that. Let me see. My internet is acting up on me again. Um, let's see. Where am I looking here for somebody cheap? I'm gonna go. I, I'm pretty sure Din- or, uh, Davis is out, and I like your thinking that that Russell is going to sit in this one. I'll go Spencer Dinwiddie here. E- even if even if um, Russell doesn't sit, like they they should blow out Memphis, assuming that LeBron is back. Almost certainly AD sitting, but I think Dinwiddie uh, mm-hmm. has a little redemption here for his his bust on Tuesday night. Uh, over 8K to go under 5X. Who's your bust today? Um, I will go Dejounte Murray. I like that priced up. Um, good call there. Uh, let's see. Sorry, my internet is moving very slow. It's not even letting me click around, so I'm <laughs> having trouble getting to the player pool. Even, um, I will go Tyrese Halliburton. Uh, tough matchup against Chicago. Slow paced game. He's been struggling to find uh, 5X pretty regularly here. So Tyrese Halliburton will be my boss today. How about a 6X play? Um, 
I will go with. Um... Wow, DK is acting weird right now. Um, is it, oh, I will maybe go. It's not like... like mine will yeah, not I think even like move on. to positions. It's weird. Yeah, it was very <laughs> odd. I, I'm going to go Austin Reeves. Love that call. Yep. Um, let's see here. I will go. Oh, actually, Kobe White. Okay. What am I doing? Love that. Yep. <laughs> love yeah, it. Love and, it. And I'm betting. And I'm betting his over 20 and a half points right now on DK Sportsbook. Good call. I will be telling you on that one, sir. Um, I will go Dante DiVincenzo for my 6x play. Love him today yep. as well. Yep. Uh, and how about a GP? Get, let's get weird GPP play. Let's get weird. Um, well, I think Precious actually would be a good play for that too. Um, yeah, I, I don't think I don't, I don't know if I high. can do that. Yeah, no, he won't be that high at all. Um, yeah, I'll go with Precious. All right, I will go Andre Drummond. Like, just dude gets it done in, in limited minutes. Uh, really like the matchup for him here against Indiana. Um, probably doesn't play 20 minutes, but might end up with 30 DK points. So huge slate. I don't think anybody will be touching that. Um, any bets that you just you just gave out the Kobe White prop? Uh, what, 20 yeah, and points? 20 and a half on DK right now. I think it's only minus 110 stand, standard juice. So, yeah. All right. Sounds good. Um, I do not have anything for uh, the betting portion. Did you like any uh, lines or spreads or anything? Uh, I haven't looked. Uh, I think I'm just going to stick with that one for now to give out to the people. All right. Sounds good. Uh, Stevie will be back tomorrow. As I mentioned, I will be joining him again and we will be breaking down MLB. Uh, so make sure you tune in for that one. But appreciate you joining Tim and I as we uh, race to the end of the NBA season here. Have a great day, everybody.